So it's been a few days now since the Sonic the Hedgehog movie redesign finally, finally united the internet over something. For the first time in ages, people are actually celebrating their love for Sonic the Hedgehog. People actually having nice things to say about Sonic, that makes me so happy. But there are a few misconceptions regarding the rhyme and reason about this Sonic the Hedgehog redesign. Now, I'm not going to claim that I have 100% of the facts on this. So if I am proven wrong at a later date, I'll put my hand up and admit that, but for now, this is what we actually know. So there are folks saying that this was all a publicity stunt, that Sonic was always intended to look like this, and the version that we got in the trailer was made specifically for that trailer to generate buzz. That they made a drastic redesign of Sonic the Hedgehog to get people talking, and then they would get people talking again when they go ahead and fix it. Now, I don't think this one is too difficult to debunk. Obviously, this is is not true. Sonic the Hedgehog's character model in that original trailer which featured the creepy Sonic, if one positive thing can be said about it is that it does look pretty expensive. The fur and the textures are all extremely detailed, and it takes a lot of time and money to render fur on that level of detail. Even if this character model were literally only rendered for the few minutes that we see it in that original trailer, this would still cost a lot of money and time. Why would they do that? This would be a ridiculously expensive marketing move, especially when you also account for the delay in the production. For Sonic the Hedgehog's originally proposed November 2019 release date, that would have been quite a cushy place for this film to sit, because it's at that midway point between the summer movie season and the Star Wars release schedule. It sits perfectly with very little actually rivaling it. The film was delayed to February 2020, to account for time to redesign, reanimate, and re-render Sonic the Hedgehog. In February, this film has to battle it out with Warner Brothers' Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, but also another film of the same genre, Peter Rabbit 2, which will also pull in the family audience and will now have people having to choose between Peter Rabbit 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog. Another thing that will likely hinder Sonic the Hedgehog at the box office is the fact that Peter Rabbit 2 is a sequel. It will have returning audience from the predecessor. Sonic the Hedgehog, on the other hand, has to stand on his own two feet. So tell me, why would they spend a few million designing a very specific prank version of Sonic the Hedgehog that is highly detailed to debut to the world, only to then say, that's not the real one. The real one is actually here, and we're pushing the release date to a point of complete and total disadvantage. It is absolute nonsense. And I also think the the evidence is there in Sonic's appearance as well. While I love the redesign, and I'm extremely grateful for the redesign, it is evident that this is a cheaper, more hastily done version than the previous one. Now hear me out here guys, something that looks cheaper can still look better than the more expensive and elaborate version as seen before. You can kind of see in the previous trailer that Sonic's fur was rendered with more fidelity and texture in the previous model than it is on the new one. There are times when Sonic is looking quite shiny in the new one, and significantly less textured. Now that's okay, I'm absolutely fine with that, I have no issue with that, I'm so grateful that they did this in the first place, but it has to be noted that Sonic is looking a lot less expensive than he did before. And that's because doing this stuff the first time was expensive and time consuming, doing it the second time is even more tough. Now there is one person that's been very vocally against the redesign of Sonic the Hedgehog, and appropriately enough that person is Dr. Robotnik himself, Jim Carrey. The reason Jim Carrey is so concerned about this is because he feels like it betrays the original vision of director Jeff Fowler and producer Tim Miller. Now if you remember, Martin Scorsese expressed great concern in what films like Marvel Studios' tentpole blockbuster releases mean for auteuristic cinema. Nobody can bring their own vision to life anymore, it all has to be community driven now. Which means that all of the danger and risk of filmmaking is gone, and ultimately you're just gonna get crowd pleasers that don't actually mean anything. This very much mirrors Jim Carrey's concern in this particular movie here. But, Tim Miller and Jeff Fowler 
are both very respectful of Sonic the Hedgehog, and neither of them wanted to go as hard in the realistic direction of Sonic's original design as they did in that first trailer. Allegedly, Paramount were really pushing for a very realistic version of Sonic the Hedgehog, which they just kind of had to make the best of. And this makes a lot of sense, because there are always studio mandates when it comes to these kind of movies. So the fact that they had to have the realistic, grisly-looking Sonic the Hedgehog that we had in the previous trailer wasn't exactly convenient for Jeff Fowler and Tim Miller either. This was not their, I guess you could say, auteuristic vision. The only people actually happy with the Goosebumps cover looking Sonic were Paramount Pictures. So when you think about it, you've got Sonic the Hedgehog, who is the vision of Yuji Naka, who originally created the character. This design has been taken, processed, vetted, and made so it's appropriate for a live-action film where this character never, ever belonged. Yuji Naka isn't happy, Jeff Fowler isn't happy, Tim Miller isn't happy, the fans aren't happy, but the studios are imposing their idea of Sonic the Hedgehog unto us regardless. You see what I'm getting at here? The film is more of an auteur film if you just stick to the original vision of Sonic. And at the end of the day, this was never gonna be an auteur movie. This was always going to be a studio-mandated cash-in for the Sonic the Hedgehog brand. And when you make a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, what people want to see is Sonic the Hedgehog, not a studio vetted version of Sonic. So after that first trailer dropped and every one of us was so vocal about it, it got to them. It got our message heard. It got Jeff Fowler to say, see, point proven, took it to Tim Miller. Tim Miller said, yep, that's right, let's take that over to Paramount. Do we have permission to redesign Sonic? And then Paramount were like, well, yeah, if people aren't going to like it, then they're not going to see it. So, yeah, let's do this. But not to mention that this design was put into the hands of someone who feels truly, truly, truly passionate about Sonic, evidently, one Tyson Hess. Now, in the past, I thought Tyson Hess was just an animator that made fan animations and was brought on to do Sonic Mania. Nope, turns out I'm wrong there, as pointed out by viewers. Tyson Hess originally made a Sonic the Hedgehog fan comic before being brought on as the artist art director of Archie Comics Sonic, and then he was brought on as the art director for the animation on Sonic Mania, and then the Sonic Mania Adventures, and then Sonic Racing Overdrive. And it's safe to say it became so evident that Tyson Hess had an absolutely ideal vision for what Sonic the Hedgehog is supposed to be artistically. But what also makes this kind of a win-win scenario is that this was a once-in-a-lifetime achievement for Tyson Hess to be working on a big Hollywood motion picture, but as well as that, when you really compare the two designs for Sonic side by side, it's actually less different than you'd think. They've still gone for photorealistic fur textures. The eyes are still two eyes as opposed to the famous mono eye that Sonic has. It's just that Tyson Hess took that design and brought it to life, enlarging the eyes so they're beautiful and expressive, fixing the anatomy so that Sonic no longer looks like this weird human monkey creature, removing the uncanny human features such as lips and realistic teeth putting Sonic's gloves back on and giving us shoes much closer to the original Sonic the Hedgehog shoe design while still tying in with a Puma product placement. It is very much in many ways the same design, just now streamlined and expressive and fit for human consumption, clearly. Legitimately, I think this is something worth celebrating. On how many occasions have Hollywood adapted beloved cultural icons and gone too far with them? They've tried to present it as the Hollywood version, but it just misses everything we love about the classic. I mean, look at Michael Bay's Transformers. Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In fact, Michael Bay's anything, just literally that. Meanwhile, the people that actually love and understand the character are all saying, no, this isn't right, this isn't it. It's like we've actually entered some Twilight Zone world where Hollywood actually listens to us now and brings on people that do feel really passionate about it. And we've got a great team here with Jeff Fowler, Tim Miller, and Tyson Hess. That's a, that's a match made in heaven, surely. Now then, there are ways this this could take a nosedive in the future. Because imagine now we're in a world where the slightest bit of backlash gets this done, ma makes things just go stick into the original and everything. We got lucky with Sonic, and this is the first time this has really happened since, I guess, Predator, but Predator happened in the very early stages of production. We weren't supposed to know about that one, but Predator had an originally very different design until Arnold Schwarzenegger complained about it. In this instance, it worked. We have a Sonic the Hedgehog redesign that still sticks within the original vision, just brings it to life better. And to be fair, it did legitimately need it. But imagine we get to a world 
world where, like, say, we have the next instance, like, uh, what we have with Joker, where he had the redesign where he's now wearing a red suit and he's got John Wayne Gacy inspired clown paint, and now all people have to do is say, that's not the classic Joker, and they'll hurriedly change it. Nobody ever gets to be imaginative with these things anymore, and that, that could be a problem, but I doubt that's gonna happen, because I think it's cost them enough money on this project. I think it's cost them enough blood, sweat, and tears on this project. In fact, actually, yeah, this does remind me of another familiar circumstance, uh, Pixar's Toy Story 2, where they basically got the whole film made, but they just thought, it's not very good, so they reanimated the whole thing from the start. Again, it's one of those things where we never caught a glimpse of that early cut, so it's never happened on quite as large of a scale as the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, but this is this is still a big deal. Well, what do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are links to my Patreon and my Discord. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day, and stay tuned for exciting promos. Oh, hey gang, look at this! Channel Goat is back, but he's got bad news. His computer was hacked by the Adzinko gang, and they leaked his private information. And now his goat cojones are there for everybody to see. Ah oh, man, that's quite a predicament you got there, Channel Goat. And the thing is, you're not the only one. Do you know how many people get hacked per year, and have their personal information and data spread online for all to see? A lot. Like, look it up. And I know what the rest of you are thinking. It hasn't happened to me, yet. Well, emphasis on yet. I mean, how old are you? Right, now how long is the average human lifespan? That's a lot of time that you could get hacked in. And by the time that's done, everybody is gonna know what your PP looks like. Do you really want that? Do you really want the world to see your PP? You run that risk every single day, guys. Seriously, hackers, pretty talented people. Which is why I, for one, use NordVPN to protect my private information and my Nords. It shuffles your data so that it can't be found by hackers, but not only that, it can also unlock the worldwide range of Netflix. And, like, who wouldn't want that, right? Now you can really maximize your subscription. The fact is, guys, you could save yourself the stress and a lawsuit by simply browsing with NordVPN. And I've made it easy for you. A link is in the description below. And this subscription comes with a promise. Nobody has to know what you're into anymore. <laughs> you little furry, you. Anyway, sign up today. Seriously, do it. Please, for your sweet little puppy. This video is brought to you by Zentai Zentai for all your cosplay needs. Link is in the description below and they are very cool and good. Cosplay your favorite characters or send in one of your own designs. Affordable prices and very high quality. Made to order and made to measure. But most of all, made to be heckin' awesome. If you couldn't already tell. Guys, can you believe where we are now and where we started? How long ago it was that Channel Pup or Channel Goat even came about? Because it really wasn't that long when you think about it. Can you believe the amount of support I've received from this community, from, from all of you subscribing to the channel and everything? It's, it's unreal. It's a dream come true for me. But behind the YouTubers you watch usually comes a bit of a truth is that they're often dirt poor. Now I've had the good fortune of being able to grow this YouTube channel and hopefully turn it into a career, but I'm gonna need a little bit of help along the way to even the odds to make ends meet so that I can use all of the possible time that I have to make videos for you guys as opposed to doing something mundane for barely enough money to make it worth its while. I've done all that. I've lived that life. The fact is, together we all built Channel Pup. We made it what it is today and I want to keep the ball rolling on that. I don't ever want to stop doing this because this is the most gratifying job I've ever had. And I think the most pleasurable hobby anyone could ever have. I don't take any of the support that I receive from you guys for granted, but if in any way you're wondering if maybe you could do a little more for the channel even, then I want I want to direct you to the Patreon link in the description below. It would mean the world to me to have your support via Patreon. It can help me to make ends meet, it can help me to better my content, it can help me to have more time to really work on this stuff. But you know what, I'm not just going to take your support and run. No way, Jose. I've, uh, in the Patreon, you can access exclusive videos via the Pups Project Room playlist, where you can see different projects that I've been working on or have worked on that have either not made it to YouTube for general viewing or have been canceled or, well, you can get a little view of the process that goes behind the Channel Pup videos and productions. As well as that, you tend to get advanced previews of 
the bigger Channel Pup projects, our tentpole event projects. If you've seen Marvelous Tales of Spider-Man, you'll be aware that that was released on the Patreon first, and uh, 20 days later approximately was released for general viewing on YouTube. That's not the only time I'm gonna do this. But you know what? If you can't do the Patreon, or are just not interested in doing the Patreon, I fully understand. Like, it, it's, it's still a big ask, in my opinion. And what counts most is your support. So, as always, thank you so much, guys. I've been Channel Pup, and I will think of a better catchphrase next time. Now please leave me alone!